In contrast to diplomatic action on Syria, the United States and the international community have been far less vocal about the situation in Bahrain, where human rights groups say detentions, torture and political repression continue. An independent commission of inquiry into the government crackdown released findings in December that documented a pattern of abuses and noted a culture of impunity. Activists within Bahrain point to key U.S. military installations in the region and Bahrain's close relationship with Saudi Arabia, a U.S. ally, as reasons for inaction. For more, we're joined on the phone from Manama by Nabil Rajab with the Bahrain Center for Human Rights. Welcome to FSRN. Yes, hello, dear. Trials are still ongoing in Bahrain. They're run by the government for medical staff who are charged with treating wounded demonstrators. Your organization is reporting this week the recent arrest of two medical staff. What's the latest here? You know that many people, uh, most of people, especially wounded in the protests, daily protests we have everywhere, they don't go to hospital because once they go to hospital, they get arrested before getting treated and they get humiliated because the hospital is occupied by the army and the intelligence and security institution. So we start treating most of the protesters, hundreds of protesters we have weekly basis getting wounded and injured. We start getting them uh, treated at home. And we should, we can, we ask people to donate some medicine here and there. So these two women were, were accused of bringing some medicines from government hospital to treat these uh, protesters. And the protesters, they're afraid to go to the hospitals. Oh, yeah, they don't go to hospital. Most of the protesters, I mean, not only protesters, even myself. Now, I was beaten up and I have a problem in my back. And I need, I'm waiting to leave the country and go treat it outside. I can't go to the hospital. You know? I, don't, I, don't, I don't trust that they don't kill me in the hospital. Because even in the theater room, you have the security persons are being there. So if you are injured or if you just need medical attention, where do you go? What are your options? Mostly at home. We go out to, to the mosque. We go to some uh, houses, and we have put uh, medicine in many houses in each village, distributed. Thousands of people being treated outside. Unfortunately, because lack of medicine, because lack of mercy, uh, machine, machineries, we have many people died because of that also. Because they couldn't get the medical attention that they needed. Because they cannot get, and by the time the doctors, the volunteer doctors arrive, and by you get the, the medicine, it's too late. And we have people dying because of that reason. But still people will prefer dying in their home and rather than going to hospital. And Mr. Rajab, you yourself have um, related to us on the program about your own experience with being detained and your own run-in with security forces there as well. Well, this has been ongoing. It's in my house and now almost on a weekly basis get attacked by the security forces. And myself, I was again beaten up before two, three weeks by the security forces, and I was taken to hospital. And me, my, but this is the cost of freedom. This is the cost of the changes that we are fighting for. And I, I, me and hundreds of people are willing to pay that cost and to achieve our freedom. So that's still ongoing in your situation? It is ongoing. Till last week, till it's going on here. They haven't stopped. There is no pressure. There is nothing that will make them stop. What would you like to see from a country like the United States? What do you see as an effective policy to end these um, human rights violations that your organization documents there? We need them the same values, the same principles they're talking about, human rights and all that, should apply in everywhere. It's not only in those countries they have a problem with. We learned a lot from United States. We learned it from the school of United States. They, we, we're fighting for the same cause, the same reason, the same values they have fought for many, many years ago. It is not fair now they're staying against us because we're fighting for democracy. They should have one policy. They should have one, one, one language towards all the revolution, whether it's in Syria, whether it's in Bahrain, whether it's in Saudi Arabia. Nabil Rajab is the director with the Bahrain Center for Human Rights. He joined us by phone from Manama.